የተከብራችሁ ያስረኛው የታና ፎረም ተሳታፊዎች እንግዶች ወደ ኡባ ባህር ዳር እንኳን በሰላም መጣችሁ ይህ ፎረም የንግግር የምክክርና የውቀት ሽግግር እንዲሆንላችሁ እመኛለሁ ተናስተሊ Your Excellency Abdul Fattah Abdul Rahman Al Burhan President of the Sovereign Council of the Republic of Sudan Your Excellency Jessica Rose Epo Alopo Vice President of the Republic of Uganda Your Excellency Hamza Barry Abdi Prime Minister of the Federal Republic of Somalia Mr Chair Mr Deputy Prime Minister Excellencies distinguished participants ladies and gentlemen at the outset i would like to extend a warm welcome to all attending the 10th round of the tana high level forum it is pleasant to see diverse participants from different continents disciplines and culture all united in the diverse to build a resilient africa and discuss way to manage issues threatening our continent security excellencies building a resilient africa means not only withstanding unexpected shocks but also proactively planning and developing innovative homegrown africa led solutions today assuming that other parts will be discussed by other colleagues i want to touch upon three security issues that requires our attention water energy and data governance africa is vulnerable to climate change despite contributing least to the problem most of our populations resides in rural areas and most survive on subsistence farming relying heavily on rainfed agriculture today one in three african experiences water scarcity ethiopia continues to invest in renewable energy including hydroelectric power plants and solar and wind farms making gas and our neighboring countries energy resilient this is in addition to our strong stand to not only relieve our acute electricity shortage but also export electricity by efficiently utilizing our resources in ethiopia rain fed agriculture yields 30% of our expected production to mitigate this we have substantially expanded commercial irrigation and paved its way to wheat self sufficiency by planting heat tolerant water efficient with varieties that adopt to arid and semi arid agro ecologies additionally we have launched green lakes initiative which focused on boosting forestation and afforestation in 20 19 our target was to plant 20 billion eco-friendly seedlings today we have not only met our targets but surpassed them, planting 25 billion trees which with a survival rate of over 70% and creating nurseries we have created over 125 nurseries across the country with the potential of producing 8 billion seedlings the initiative has also created close to 1 million jobs ethiopia will continue to forge a sustainable system of green living green behavior and green economy as communities grapple with climate change and its implications governments are experiencing the impact of the energy crisis increases in the price of oil and gas 
and disruptions in energy supply chains, which strongly highlights the urgent need of innovative solutions. The Ethiopian government is making significant policy interventions along that line. Recently, we have adopted policies to create emission-free transport system, including supporting policy intervention in the adoption of electric vehicles. Excellencies, we cannot discuss security without technology. New technologies shape international relations and may cause vulnerabilities in the areas, in the areas of digital and technological sovereignty. While technologies, economic, social, and labor implications are apparent, we need to start producing strategies on the geopolitical dimension of technology, ensuring we influence standards in a way that corresponds with African values and enable us to participate in innovative emerging technologies. Thus, a Pan-African data governance strategy must be considered to help the continent realize an African single market for data aligned with the African Union Agenda 2063. Excellencies, I want to call upon governments, development institutions, and non-state actors to collaborate and strengthen our analytical capacities and adopt artificial intelligence and big data for more competitive pan-African digital economy. I especially want to applaud the youths who have shared their perspective on security through their essays and reiterate that African youth should be integrated into decision-making process to ensure we create the resilient, diverse, equitable, and inclusive Africa we want. I wish you all a pleasant stay in this beautiful, magnificent city of Bardar and a successful deliberation. God bless you all.